Hello everyone, in this tutorial we're going to learn how to work with texture buttons. And this is going to allow us to create all kinds of fancy buttons that have different looks and styles to them. So what you can see here, I have a demo project and it's very simple. I've got my standard header up at the top and then a body color rect that I can work with. The first thing that I'm going to need to do to create a texture button is to actually get some textures or images that I can use with my button. You can find these on the internet, but I have loaded up open gamearts.org and this is as the name suggests simply a website where lots of different designers share different game art assets that people can use so if you come here and do a search on buttons for example some different options will come up for this particular demo I'm going to use these examples by Hockadium and you can see here you can download these and there's attribution instructions if you were to actually use these in a game about how to give Hockadium credit for the artwork that he or she has produced. So if you were to download that, let me go down to my desktop. You can see here I have a zip file called buttons. Let's just unzip that and I'll look inside. You can see there's all these PNG files of just button textures. They're literally just images. And then here is the preview of all of them. And so we're going to be using these in our project. So let me switch back over to Godot. And the first thing I want to do is import these images into Godot. So I'm actually, just to stay organized in my resources folder in the file system, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this images. And I might even go further to create another folder called buttons. So these are going to be images, or these are going to be images for buttons specifically. So now that I have that in action, I'm going to come back over to my desktop and I'm going to select all of these button images and I'm going to drag and drop them into the buttons folder. Now it looks like I missed with my drag and drop. So I am going to select these and just make sure I get them in the buttons folder. Just a way to help me stay organized a little bit. Okay, so how do we use these? Uh, well, the way we do that is we use something called a texture button. Select body, right click, add child node, and this is a type of control. It's actually related to base button, but instead of button, I am going to be working with a texture button. And I'm gonna go ahead and click create, and you can see here I have my empty texture button visible on the screen. So now what I have to do is actually apply these images, use those as textures for this button. So if I come over to the inspector, we will see here there are some of the properties we can adjust are the texture properties. Now importantly, there are texture properties for the normal button state, the pressed button state, the hover button state, so on and so forth. So in other words, for texture buttons, we have to supply a custom texture for each of those states so that Godot knows what the button should look like when button is in his normal state, when it's being hovered over with the mouse, so on and so forth. So let's start with the normal state. So I am going to say, I want to use a new image texture and then I have to actually click right here and specify what kind of texture I'm going to use. And notice this palette shows up and what I'm gonna do is come over to my button images and I'm gonna choose button seven for this demo. And I'm just gonna drag and drop that right onto here and I'm gonna load that button, good. And let me just get this in the center so it's a little easier to see. Okay, that's excellent. That takes care of the normal state so if I was to save my project and run it, I have this default button and it's in its normal state. Of course, it doesn't do anything. I can't click on it. It doesn't react to the user's mouse, but I've got it started. In order to get it to feel a little bit more like a button, what I need to do is distinguish the pressed and hover state. So typically when you hover your mouse over a button, it should react to that mouse hover. And so what we will do is simply use a different texture for the hover state. So again, I'm gonna draw Drop that down, click new image texture, click on the image texture button, and then I am going to change colors now. I'm gonna change over to button number six. So it's gonna turn a little bit more green. 
when I hover over it. So let's see if that actually works. I'm going to save and run. And when I mouse over my button, look at that. It's changing from one color to the next very easily. And we probably need one more state, which is when the user presses it. When they click on it, what's going to happen? And of course, that's called the pressed state. So I'm going to drop this down again and include an image texture. And I'll use button five. Whoops. First, I have to expand this. Now I can drag and drop five over and set it in there. Good. I'm going to save and run. So this is the normal state, the hover state. And if I click, that is the pressed state. Excellent. So there's three different states for this button. Now, of course, we realized right away our button doesn't have any text on it. So that that's no good. The user won't know what the label is for this button. So what we need to do is actually add a label as a child of the texture button. So what I'm going to do is make sure in the scene tree that texture button is selected. I'm going to right click add child node and the child I want to add is a label. And with that selected, I'm going to I want it to fill up the whole button. So I'm going to bring down my layout drop down. I'm going to tell it to be a full rectangle. I want it to expand to fill its parent, which is the texture button. Now I'll come over to the inspector panel and I'll just type in something that you might see on a button such as start game. And let's align that to the center horizontally and both vertically. Now that doesn't look so good. So I am going to add a custom font to it. So I need to choose a new dynamic font and we've already learned how to do this. I need to select the font data. So I'm going to load, come into fonts and I'm going to use this one I have here, Snow K. And you can see already the font has changed, but I am going to increase the size. Whoops. Let's let's try 32 and see what that's a little too crowded. Let's go a little smaller down to 28. Perfect. Now, if I save this and run my code, I have a custom looking button. And if I mouse over it, it changes color. So it feels interactive. When I press on it, it changes colors yet again. And so that's how you work with texture buttons. Now, if that button was too big, of course, I can select it over here, collapse the texture properties, and I can, like any other control, I can do a lot with adjusting its size. So for example, let's say I want it to be half the scale that it currently is. I could change it to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and I have, whoops, I have a button that looks like this. Now, you see how I just accidentally dragged off the text there? To avoid that, you might want to tell the texture button to lock its children. That way, I can only move the whole button and not the, its children by accident. That's what this button right here does. Now, of course, this button doesn't do anything, but I could easily add a signal to it, such as a pressed signal, and go ahead and treat this just like the default buttons that come with Godot. Thanks everyone. So that's a quick tutorial on how to use texture buttons.